Hi there, um, this is a screencast to show you a few ways to use your performance series data in order to form strategic small groups. So here we are on the home page for performance series and this will be a great introduction to the system if you haven't yet seen it. So in order to get to our classroom level data on the home page, we're going to go right here to the classroom tab. Once here, I am able to pull from this menu and able to, I'm able to see any of my classes that I have. Now on here, I have classes for an entire school, so I'm just going to pick one particular teacher and classroom that we can go ahead and look at. Of course, you would only have the classes that are available to you. Once you select your appropriate class, we're going to go here to Performance Diagnostic. This is going to give us the results from the test. Once here, we are able to pick which test are we interested in actually looking at. So if you are the math instructor, obviously you want to go ahead and look at the math. If you're the ELA instructor, there's reading, there's the science, and there's also language arts. Um, and remember, we do take this test three times each year. So it's very beneficial to frequently come back and check your performance series data as often as you can. Um, for the purposes of today, we're going to go ahead and look at reading. Once I go ahead and I click on a subject, whether it's reading or math, I'm now able to see all of the different units or strands that are available to me. Now, the score that the student received will be the same no matter which strand you select. Their overall scaled score is not going to be different on any of these units. But what will change are the objectives and the learning targets that you're able to see. So for the purposes of today, we're going to go ahead and pick nonfiction. On this page, over here on the left, shows each child's scaled score. Again, this is their overall scaled score for the reading portion of the test. It will also give a decile number. More about this in a different training, but this is the overall scaled score. Again, it doesn't matter if we had picked fiction, nonfiction, long passage. This number here in bold, this would be the same for every single one of those strands. But what does change is over here on the right, which are all the different objectives that were in this particular test. As you can see, it's a pretty long list. Now this doesn't mean that every child in your class saw every single one of these objectives. That's why it's a very, very long list. But this is just, um, these are just examples of objectives that any child in your class could have seen. I want to show you here too. On each objective, you will actually see a grade level. So 7th grade, 6.1 for 6th grade. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of your list, sometimes you'll even see 12th grade. Here's 11th and 12th. Sometimes it's things that are past the grade level you're actually teaching. Those are probably objectives that you don't want to spend too much time on right now because the children really aren't ready to talk about those yet. But maybe one or two of your students actually got um, that high on the test and that's why they're appearing in this list. Let me give you a little bit of a tour of these objectives. They are ranked by how many students attained that particular objective and that's why you can see the very first one here. If I had a class of 30, looks like all 30 students were able to attain this particular objective. Now this class that we're looking at right now is a seventh grade class and the first objective was the learner will choose the correct genre for a second grade non-fictional passage. And all 30 students were able to att attain that. As you can see, as we go down, it starts to dip. 
29 attained, one did not. And again, as we scroll, we're going to see those numbers start to change. Look at number 89 right here. The learner will restate ideas from a consumer material at a fifth grade level. 21 students attained those and nine did not. Now we can actually drill down further to see which students attained and which ones did not. And this is where it becomes very helpful to pull your strategic small groups. If we pick this button right here, it looks like the silhouette of a person. And now it's going to go ahead and break down for us students who completed this objective and students who have not completed this objective. This looks like a pretty great place to start to pull small groups. I've got about three, six, nine students here who have not completed this particular objective. This might be a great way to just break this into two, five students and four students and pull two different groups to work on this particular objective. And again, these are the students who were not able to attain it. So you have that very, very specific information. Now there's probably at least two ways to use this particular page of information that you're looking at. One is for something like this, which we would call gap filling. Anytime that we find gaps in students learning, we wanna make sure that we're able to pull them in a small group setting and go ahead and, and really try to sharpen that skill. But you could also go ahead and pull objectives that students are currently working on in your classroom as well. So it might not necessarily be gap filling, but it's actually going along with what you're talking about in class. So for example, perhaps you are going ahead and you're reading a non-fictional passage in your class. Most of your students are doing that in their Canvas course. Well, then this is maybe a great one to use, and now you can find out which three students are still kind of struggling in that area and really be ready for that. It's great for prevention as well. So again, these objectives can be used in a couple of different ways. One is just to gap fill, and you want, want to keep track of these targets that you're working on and which students you're working on. Or you might want to go ahead through these lists and find the ones that correspond to exactly what's going on with the majority of your class at that time and pull groups accordingly. Either way will be very, very successful for your classroom. Using the objectives in this manner will also allow you to create fluid small groups. This way students are not always working with this, their same colleagues all of the time. They're not stuck in a static group, um, which often can lead to, to being stigmatized or um, kind of tracked that way. So this will really allow groups to be fluid. Um, sometimes a student might be, you know, they might be in this group that did not attain this particular objective, but then next time you pull that kid, they might be with completely different students who didn't attain a different objective. So again, this just gives students a, a way to work with all of their peers and be able to work with various students, which really is a world, real world application. All right, remember, you have access to the screencast whenever you might need it in this course. So watch it as often as you need. And hopefully this is some information for you to pull strategic small groups in the future.